Hi and welcome to another card making video. Today I'm joining the Simon Says Tab blog hop for their latest release. Make sure to visit my blog to join the blog hop for a chance to see all the new products in action as well as win lots of prizes. For today's project I'm focusing on this new stencil. This is the Orange Blossom one and I'm going to show you a really fun technique where you can get that loose watercolor look without actually watercoloring. You don't need any fancy supplies for that, your distress inks will do the trick and you can definitely do this technique with your uh, oxide inks. And you don't need any fancy tools again, I'm just going to use my good old blending tools. So just go ahead and use any blending tool that you have. So in this stencil you will get those two little circles, these are supposed to be oranges, an orange blossom, a couple of leaves, a stem as well as some loose leaves as well. For this faux loose watercolor technique you need to work on uh, watercolor paper. So I'm going to place on top the stencil and with my blending tool I'm going to apply two shades of green for the leaves. You can tape down your stencil if you like, I don't really mind for this technique since I'm going for a loose look and feel so if my stencil moves just a bit it's not the end of the world. By the way, the colors that I'm using are shabby shutters, which is the lighter one and I just cover up the whole leaf with that. And then for the center, I'm going with mauve blown. I'm just uh, creating a composition with the leaves that I have on the stencil. Again, following the same technique, darker at the center, blend it out to the lighter color. And let's add a couple of loose leaves just for the fun of it. And maybe one more down here. Now since this background is going to be loose and have more of a mixed media look and feel, I decided to do some stamping on the background. So I just grabbed one of my text stamps and instead of using here my distress ink, I'm using oxide ink just to show you that this technique works with both types of inks. So I'm just randomly adding some text at the background and then grab your water and spray over the top. This is going to move the ink you can even lift the paper and help the ink move any direction that you like. Just because this is watercolor paper, it's going to take water nicely and it actually helps the ink to move around. The more water you add, the more the ink is going to move. It really depends on you, on how loose you want this to look. You can definitely leave it aside to dry or just use your heat can like I'm doing here. Swipe your green ink pad on the glass and then uh, apply some water to dilute it and you can use that to create some splashes. And then if you feel like your design is very faded out from all the water, you can definitely go back and add a little bit more. However, don't overdo it at this step, just a touch if you want to make it more prominent. It really depends on the look that you are going for. Now let's do the oranges. For this design I decided to ink up the oranges on a separate piece of watercolor paper so that I can cut them out and pop them on top of my card. However, you can definitely go for a one layer card and add that directly on top of the previous background. The colors I used for my oranges are spiced marmalade and ripe persimmon. Now you will find in the stencil a bunch of little dots, these are to create some details on top of your oranges, add them on the darker side of uh, the orange and I'm just adding a little bit of vintage photo to finish them off. Now I'm going to die cut those circles, uh, but I'm going to show you again this technique with the water. Let's spray them out so you can see how lovely they look if you want to go without faux loose watercolor look. And you can create a background like that with a few oranges here and there as well as some leaves in between. In any case, for this design I'm going to use circles to die cut the oranges. And uh, there are matching dies available for this stencil that cuts out the little uh, flower, the leaves as well as the oranges. I don't have these dies but I did use my nesting circle dies and found out some that fit those oranges. Now I'm using a rectangle die that has some stitching all around and I'm going to cut out this panel. This is going to give a lovely detail on the edge. And then on top of that I'm just going to stick my oranges. I'm using foam tape at the back. 
So this way I achieved some dimension, but you can definitely go for a flat look if you ink up those oranges directly on top of the background. It would definitely give a more authentic, loose watercolor feel. I did die cut a few tiny white flowers and these dies are from my collection, the Birdhouse collection with spellbinders. And in the center of the flowers I'm going to stick tiny little golden pearls. So at this stage my panel is pretty much ready. I need to find a card base that matches this beautiful background. I was debating between those two cardstock panels. I decided to go with a lighter one and I do have foam tape at the back. So it is raised. For my sentiment I chose to go with the ready-made sentiment strips. I just cut out the one that says best wishes. I always create a panel like this and then stick it on top of a white card base that's four and a quarter by five and a half. So here are some close-up photos on the card that I shared for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Links to everything I used can be found down below. Thank you all for watching and have a lovely weekend.